Well, hello YouTube. Today what we're going to be working on is this Duromax 7.5 horsepower 5500 watt generator. This was actually purchased new quite some time ago and it's I've never even gotten around to setting it up and trying it out. <laughs> I got this from I believe I got it on eBay actually. I believe I paid about $300 for this and that included shipping. Uh, I want to say the last time I looked them up I believe Home Depot was selling them for about $500, $450 to $500 and Lowe's didn't even have the price listed. And those are the two local box stores around here, so I'd say I got a good deal, but I haven't used it yet, so who knows. Let's take a closer look. The reason that I chose this particular generator is because that it is a dual fuel generator. It's only going to be used in the case of an emergency if power in a power outage, extended power outage, to run the sump pumps in the refrigerator. So I, I really don't want to mess around with having to drain the fuel after the storm, drain the fuel and run out the carburetor and what have you and then refill it the next time that the power goes out and the thing won't start and yeah so take a little look here at what it came with obviously we got a manual set got the little rubber funnel to fill the oil Get the propane hose and regulator, and a bag of stuff. In here, I'm not going to take all this out, but in here there's the DC charging leads. There's, well that's a bag of silica gel. There's a spark plug wrench, a small tool kit, and these bolts in those brackets were just part of the shipping braces. So now if you would go buy an electric start generator at say Harbor Freight, you have to buy the battery separately. It's not it doesn't come with it. This one came with the battery. It also came with the wheel kit which typically comes separately when you buy any generator lower cost anyway. I haven't even looked at the upper end units. But we'll take a look at the controls. Seems fairly well made. I mean for what it is. Have a dual breaker. We can switch between AC only, 120 volt only I mean, and 120 240, which is your twist lock connector. I believe, yeah, 20 amp, 20 amp rating, 30 amp rating on here. 12 volt, I'm not sure what the output of that is. Price is in the book. Start, run, stop, batteries disconnected. And we have our propane inlet. Not really much to see on this side, just the muffler and the back end of the generator. It does have a fuel gauge on it, four gallon fuel tank. On the back we have the typical Honda clone engine. We have the carbon canister. This does have an emissions, so, so to speak, emission system on it. Air filter, carburetor, have the propane regulator and mixer in here, tube coming over to a port 
I believe that is just on the back of the carburetor. We can't really see, sort of. That braided line that comes behind there. Check the air filter, just make sure nothing's moved in. It's been sitting in the garage over the winter, just make sure nothing's moved into there. That, I would have liked to see a captive screw on that. Some flashing on the plastic. Yeah, that looks good. It's a typical foam air filter that actually has been oiled. There is a light amount of oil on the filter, which is nice. Now, which way was this in there? In there? Yeah, it was in there like that. Couldn't see that little tab. It was behind the frame. Fuel shut off which we are just going to leave that off and choke lever oh, right here we got open and closed okay just there is no detents for half choke or anything it's just a plastic lever typical honda clone carburetor Good compression. What do our tags say here? Qualification, inspector, the date. 9-30-2019. It was when it was manufactured or at least inspected. And you've got another e-spec tag on the fuel tank. Your typical warning labels. Don't use it in your living room. Use some common sense. Yeah, I know those are upside down, but... Okay. Okay, it says, it says the same thing on both sides. Then we have double-sided tag here. Quick start guide for using gasoline. And quick start guide for using propane. So first thing we're gonna do is put oil in it. There's oil on there, so that's good. It had oil in it at some point in time. Okay, fill with 30 weight oil before starting. Do not overfill. I believe, if I remember correctly, it takes about 20 ounces of oil. Yeah, oil capacity 20 ounces, run time 50% load, 10 hours to get on gasoline for 10 hours, 12 hours on a five gallon tank of propane.
that, that's what I thought. A little bit too much. We're still going to be a tad bit high, but... I know too much oil is going to... Is definitely not good either. It can sometimes be as bad as not enough oil. But the engine is tilted this way a slight bit, so we should be good. Alright, so now we'll just connect our battery. Nut is semi captive. It's not supposed to be, but it's it's stuck there a little bit, so Let's see if I can get it in without dropping either. Down the drain. Because that was a great idea to park it right over the drain. Alright, we got it. Good. Let's make sure the rubber boot is not pinched under the terminal. Okay. And let's see if it does anything. Sounds good. Now we need to hook up our propane. So we're just going to go with the quick start guide. Check oil. Engine shift without oil. We just did that. Turn fuel valve to off. That's been done. Main breaker is off. Open the choke. You don't want the choke closed when you're running on propane. So we'll make sure that is open, and it is. Attach propane line to panel inlet. propane line to tank and turn tank on. Start the generator and turn main breaker on. Alright, so the only things I have on hand right now are a small 150 watt halogen work light and a 1500 watt electric heater, but that should at least give us an idea of what we're dealing with. Here goes nothing. Maybe it just hey, it takes a little bit of time to get the propane through the system. I wouldn't have thought it would have taken that long, but geez. Almost. Let's just try giving it a little bit of choke and see what happens. It says you're not supposed to, but give it about half. Should have done that in the first place. Hey, 
for reading on the gauge. I'm not sure if you can see that, but the gauge is reading a little bit above 100 volts. Turn our breaker on. That really didn't affect, 150 watts didn't really affect anything on here. Let's turn the heater on, see what, well, we have to plug the heater in first. EH dual fuel generator. Thanks for watching.